Doodle bud. I never thought I would say it, but I might actually be using this new Jinhao pen. This is a model 9019. I might be using a Jinhao as a, I wouldn't say everyday carry, I would say as a regular carry because I'm so impressed with it. So yeah, I wasn't expecting much, but uh, I was pleasantly surprised. And I talked about this in a previous video with the X159. I was super pumped about the size 8 nib that they had on here, but then I was very disappointed with the build quality of the pen. And I was like, you know, just stop shooting for the bottom. It's not a race for the bottom. Show what you can do. And I thought, if I even said in the video, if you could do a $15 to $20 pen, I think you would have a banger. And this is a $15 to $20 Jinhao, and it is a banger. So I'm going to go through, show you what it's all about. Very impressed with this. Let's get to it. So this was recently sent to me by the folks on the AliExpress store that go by 365 Days Stationery. They're the ones that sent me a pair of the new Mahjong A1s. The fish scale one is, is one of them here that I was super impressed with. So uh, yeah, they sent me a couple more, which is I think is really great. They're the first store to reach out to me. We buy a lot of stuff off AliExpress, so I'll put a link down there in the description. Their prices are right in the hunt with everybody else. So if you could support them, that would be great because they're sending stuff out for review to get some feedback, to let... Let fountain pen enthusiasts know what these pens are like. So I, I think that's really great they're doing that. So anyways, check them out. I am very impressed with this one. Like I said in the opening, uh, where is it? Here it is, the X159. I was actually kind of excited to get it, but the thing, it just fell apart. A lot of build stuff too. Like even the converter fell apart. The ring came off there too. Uh, I had to manually put this back on. The whole section came apart and just the build and everything. I was just like, oh no, you spent all this money on this beautiful number eight nib and did it for so cheap well, i think you went too cheap um and so here we are this is much much better the interesting thing with this one too is the design so again it's a big pen and part of it tells you is this like a namiki emperor so it sort of has that flair to it it has you know the classic cigar shapes so you think like a mont blanc 149 those types of things but it's it's its own sort of unique space which is really good usually their stuff are like pure copies or the ones that aren't, I find, are pretty bad, to be totally honest. This one, <laughs> this one's pretty good. Again, like the X159 is so close to a Mont Blanc 149. Uh, I like seeing that they went a little out there where they sort of took a few cues together and they did a great job. Let's show you what this is all about. This one, again, in Canadian dollars, it's like $16 or so, something like that, from their store with free shipping. I know someone down there will go, oh, I, this store has them on for eight. Yes, and the shipping's eight. So they're, they're, they're all right around that same price, about 16 bucks Canadian. So US, I don't know, you're probably like 11 or 12 or something. Overall size, it's a big pen. We have like 147 millimeters like so, 130 millimeters like so. You can post it. That's really cool. Like it's ridiculously long, but some folks like to post it. Like it's a, I don't post my 149 because it makes it too big, but it's on there. It's secure. It wiggles a little. Like you, if you push a little harder, it's on there. But I, I don't, yeah, you know, I don't think you should push it too hard. I'll show you something in this in this pen here. I'm a little worried it might break over time. I'll show you what to look for. Um, but yeah, even the fact that it posts is nice. But that's more than comfortable. I'll do a size comparison with other pens in a minute. Uh, and then overall diameter thick uh this is the uh, the pen cap here 18.8 so let's call that thir uh, 19 millimeters about three quarters of an inch the main body here this is uh, 16 and a half pop this off you go into your section the narrowest part down here is 13 millimeters it goes up to 15 up here threads don't get in the way right so it's quite nice so very large section thick like the smallest on its 13 so this is a thick pen this probably wouldn't be great for folks who like thinner pens because this is it's really really quite big um recently i did a video on the jinhao what's the number now i think 82 how i said it's like a fantastic sub 10 dollar pen that's like the one i'd recommend for a lot of people who want to get into fountain pens i'd show it to you but i actually just gave it to someone to get into fountain pens i was at a coffee shop there's a guy there I chat with. He's a realtor. His name, no, not realtor, sorry, mortgage broker. We chat about all sorts of stuff. And he always likes to look at my pens. And I was like, dude, just take this one. Here, take this one. So I gave it to him. He's super excited. And it's. I think that's a great pen. For folks who want an entry-level pen but something bigger, this is this is the one. I would I would definitely go for this over the one five, X159. Um, yeah, it's just made so much better. Now, it might be too thick. So then, okay, go down to that one. But... 
Uh, the nib is very smooth on it, very impressed with that. There's a little feature here. Let me just show you the bits. I'm not going to get into too much of detail. It's it's pretty standard stuff, but they got the cap band, the Jinhao on there. Uh, Daddy? Dadeo? I don't Daddy. I don't know what that is. That Dadeo. D A D A O. I don't know what that means. And then we got the number 9019. That looks like that's lasered or something. I'll make it with the microscope. We'll see. We got this clip here. It looks like a Namiki clip. It's mega stiff. I be careful. I wouldn't. Okay, I wouldn't use this clip too much over something thick. Um, I even heard just as I did that a little tiny stress crack. So you're putting a lot of torque up on the clip here on fairly thin plastic. Like it's it, it is a little more brittle. Uh, that's the difference with this plastic versus the ABS. This can take a little more impact versus. But uh, anyways, so yeah, I'll show you a few little things to watch out for. But uh, it's a very stiff clip. And I would worry if you use this a lot, you're going to have some cracking going on up in here. You can see down here, if let me turn on the flash. Oh, I just turned up the white background instead. But you can see down there, there is a custom brass screw. So they make that themselves. And that goes up inside of the pen here and threads on to the top. So you can get your clip. Now you'd be like, well, Doodlebud, just take that off and show us. I would not recommend taking this off. Uh, again... That's, I can see the thread, the coarseness of it there. Just, you know, the wall thick. I would really worry about you potentially having little micro cracks in there. Just to, taking this off to take the clip off. You don't need to take the stuff off. There's no reason to disassemble this. And I would not recommend doing that as well. But there you go. So those are the parts. And that really, how they put the Jinhao on there. Normally there's like pilot. <laughs> so, sneaky buggers. Anyways, uh, they did a good job on this. Let's, while I got the contrast cranked, it's quite bright, isn't it? Anyway, so this is like their clear blue. We uh, unscrew the main body, and I'll show you this. Um, this is the part I worry a little bit here. I'll, I'll talk about this. This is a big deal that they made this part here, but um, you could probably see. Let's see if we can find it on the plastic here. There, there it is there. So I'm already getting a little bit of stress coming into those threads just because... This is like the standard thread profile they use, whether it's a brass body or plastic body. I would recommend they switch to like an Acme style thread. I, I, you're just going to, yeah, have more longevity. It's better for this type of material. Um, yeah, that's the only change I'd recommend there, but that's not going to happen. I'll tell you why in a moment. But yeah, you can already see there's just, you can feel a little bit of a bite. Now you could put silicone grease on it. That doesn't, yeah, it's that's not going to be enough. So anyways, be careful when you tighten this down. They do have an O-ring on there. Just take it easy. Don't wrench on this. All you folks that want to eh, make sure it's tight so it won't come off. It won't come off. You have good friction from that gasket. Don't tighten this too much or else this will crack over time. So think about that when you if you're going to get one of these. Just uh, expect maybe it breaks after a while, but just really take it easy. All right. I'll keep the contrast cranked for one more moment so we can see in here a little bit too. I am impressed by these. They do these on the cap and also the main body here too. They have different functions, but they also add strength to it as well, which is nice. Um, so yeah, these little like kind of mini trusses are in there. They add some strength to the overall part. What this one does also is it centers whoop, this way. It centers the top of the converter. This converter is really super neat. I'll talk about that in a second. There's a lot of neat stuff on this pen. But so you put it up and shunk. So it adds a little strength, but then it centers the converter. So that way, when you snug her down, you're not going to get, uh, well, it's rattling right now because I'm not mega tight. There we go. No rattle. I, th I think we had a bunch of rattle in this one. I don't remember because I never use it and it's broken. So I think the X159, it rattled like crazy and it drove me nuts. No rattle. So, I don't know, did they watch that video and go, hey, let's come up with this one. That's a good idea, doodle bud. We should do a $15 to $20 pen. I don't know. Maybe I'm pumping my own tires. But if they do watch this one, they did a great job. And let me show you some other important things. I briefly mentioned this section. So, they use this type of section where it's a brass and this thread on a lot of pens. This is a whole new part, right? So, it's not interchangeable as far as I know. No, it is not. Um, so, this is... A brand new part, new part number, all of that. It is more cost efficient to use an existing part you have. But this is their standard style that they have on all their other pens. Just small, you know, on the other ones it's smaller. So this is, I expect to see a lot more big pens coming from them. Because they have this new 
section the way it's machined. I expect there to be a lot more colors, uh, all sorts of stuff like that, and maybe even new designs coming out that take this housing here, the inner bit, because you're, you're going to construct the pen, uh, you know, from the inside out. This is just a body. This is just a shell. This is your core. So they got this new converter as well that fits into there. It's a thread in. So this this whole kind of the guts here, your nib, your feed, this brass part, the converter, all that. This is going to be used now to come up with other pens, I suspect. Anyways, so that's a big deal. When I saw that, I went, oh, they're going to be having a bunch of new pens come out. This is a screw and converter that helps with the wiggle. Okay. Again, just go easy on it. Um, those threads, they're, they are better than other ones I've seen before. And these are a little bit more generous. Okay. But just, yeah, take it easy on these ones. Don't over tighten. This converter, by the way, look how much bigger this is. Let me get let me get you a standard converter so you can see. Okay, let's grab one off my Faber-Castell. Here we go here. So we got a few different converters. We have your standard international. This is a Jinhao converter. Are you ready? Kajoom. <laughs> look at that thing. So this holds like 1.6 milli ink. That's I inked it up and that's what I, I did the weight difference. Maybe you can get an extra point on there. So maybe 1.7. But this is super cool that you're getting a converter. Like, it's a huge pen, so make a bigger converter. And they did smart play on their behalf. And, uh, yeah, nice nice job on this converter, guys, by the way. Whoever did this one. So that's really neat. Big volume on a converter, cartridge converter pen. So, yeah, that's a big deal. Expect to see this coming out in a bunch of more pens, too. Turning up the white balance there again so you can see some of the details. But the plating on here, they did a good job. Here is the nib. Oh, focus. There we go. So, yeah, good job on the nib. The uh, the stamp now, it was off kilter just a touch on the previous ones. It's bang on now. So they've corrected that, which is nice. Three nib sizes, which is great. So this is medium, right super smooth. But you can get fine and extra fine. I would actually like to try out their other nibs of fine and extra fine just to really see what they're like. Because uh, I usually don't write with a medium too much. I like prefer a fine. So I'd like to try one of those just to see. Get my hands on one of them. But this one writes really nice and smooth. It skips just a hair. I'll show you that in the writing sample. Probably needs a mini tune. But yeah, good job. we got a few pens to compare with. First up, Visconti Homo Sapien Bronze Age. Of course, my Mont Blanc 149. The Jinhao 9019. A Leonardo Mosaico, And then my Omas 360. So it's real close to the 149. The 149 is a touch longer. I'll pop the cap off of it so you can see. But uh, yeah, it's definitely a much, much thicker pen. Thicker than all these. I only have one pen that's bigger than that for thickness. But big one. See you there. We got the big nibs. It's uh, That's the 149 on the right. So you get a really big nib there on this Jin Hao. And then thickness. So yeah, if you think a 149 is too big and you get a 146, <laughs> this Jin Hao 9019 is a chunky monkey, so it's a big thick pen. So obviously for folks who don't like a big thick pen, you won't like this one. Okay, so enough of all that stuff, let's write with it and then we'll just wrap things up. Really nice writing nib, super smooth as I showed you here, and yeah, it's really good. It just, mine probably needs a slight, slight tune. The wetness is there, but it will skip every now and then on a, on a stroke. On a certain stroke, it'll just miss a little bit, so I'll, I'll suss that out a bit. When I, I'm actually not going to mess with it for a while. I plan to use this pen kind of often, because actually, <laughs> I actually do like, I like a Jinhao. I would have never thought I would have seen that. I've always kind of just wished they've done a better job on their pens, and they did it. So good job to them. But uh, yeah, it's missing a hair, so this might be something that will just correct itself after using it for a little while. If I end up tweaking it or adjusting it, uh, maybe I'll do a video on it. We'll see. But it doesn't need much if it does need anything at all. But yeah, this is great. I would love to try these out in either a uh, fine or extra fine or both. 
maybe I'll pick one up or something just as a comparison. I am curious because, yeah, perfect medium, perfect tuning, really good. Like I said, I have no problem giving credit where credit is due, and credit is due once again to Jinhao on this pen. Absolutely love it. So this will definitely go in one of my recommendations for a great starter pen obviously size is one thing it could this will be way too big for some folks no big deal they have, they got other pens you can get but the big pen lovers definitely go with this one as i said my only little concern is just yeah this down in here just go easy on it and don't don't mess around with taking the clip off you don't need to you're not going to need to take that off so just leave it alone also yes for you uh, pocket clippers and Clipping it over thick stuff, it just, I would again recommend, it's pretty big, That I mean, that's huge for a shirt pocket anyways, that would look a little ridiculous. I would really minimize what you're doing with that clip, just because it is pretty stiff, and the stress on there too. But other than that, oh, speaking of stress, you know what, let me, let me get out the laptop. I'm curious, just thought of this, I could maybe do the polariscope thing again. Now this is, it's not clear, we got some color to it, so I don't know if this is going to work, but... Uh, I'll set it up quick just to just to see. I'm curious myself if we can see the internal stresses like I did on my Twisbees. Give me a minute. Okay, if you haven't seen this before in a different video I did, it's a bit of a magic trick right now. I'm in paint on my laptop. You can see the taskbar down there. And I did a full white background. I'm just putting over top right now a lens from my sunglasses. It has to be polarized. And what's going to happen now is we have polarized light from the computer polarization filter that's at the right angle it should look dark because if I turn it the other way it's going to still be white so if you want to do this at home do it so the screen gets dark now put your object in front of the way and enjoy the rainbow so what you're seeing huh? mm, 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 mm. what you're seeing are the internal stresses here that are within the pen body it's a little tricky because it's going through and then through so you're, you're going to get like a double show let me get some focus that's a little better. This is called a polariscope. Now you can use this for inspecting materials and uh, big, long, colorful waves like this. That's all good. No problem. Um, what you sort of got to watch out for are some of the little high inflection points. So it will sort of tell you a little bit about the concentration of the different internal stresses within here. So I'm just curious in some of these spots. I'm curious. I just want to see it first and foremost. Um, but yeah, so you can see like when it cools and comes out of the injection molding, you can see down here just how that stress line just, they just kind of nicely go off, nice slow waves. Everything's looking pretty decent there. It's going to be a little tricky now because with those threads, I don't think we're going to be able to see what we want to see. But yeah, I was curious. This isn't really anything super interesting as far as how it impacts the pen, but just want something I would show you so you can see here. You know, no problems there. That's that little step that's inside the cap there. But yeah, looks kind of groovy, sort of like a 70s party, or if I think of uh, Austin Powers, his type of stuff. Those cool kind of groovy acid trip walls that they would have. <laughs> that's what you can get with one of these pens. But yeah, neat to see a way to inspect parts. You can do this as all sorts of stuff, and you can do this at home on the cheap. Here's a little bonus kaleidoscope with the polariscope for you. Okay, folks, that's it. As you could tell, thoroughly impressed with this pen. Uh, good job goes to Jinhao. I am curious of the other models they'll have come out that use these internal bits like I showed you here before. Uh, they might be tempted to do a metal body pen, I'm curious, but they're going to have to machine the, uh, the body and the cap mega, mega thin. This is a big, big pen. And if you don't have super thin wall on this, it's going to be just way over the top heavy and way over the top back weighted. Um, so you have to go quite thin wall if you machine a pen, but that's going to drive the cost up. And yeah, I'll be curious. They can't, you know, it's going to have to be a, a good jump in price if they decide to go with the machine pen to do what you got to do. But I would be interested if they did that or there'll be some other materials I'm sure they're going to explore too. But yeah, good job on this one. Love to hear from you if you got one, what you've thought so far, if there's a lot of buzz on this pen. Uh, if there isn't now, I think there will be because it deserves it. Anyways, we'll leave it there for now, and we'll catch you next time.